If I add a billion elements on my CPU, it takes 10 times longer than to do the same thing on the GPU. Turns out something as simple as just adding a bunch of numbers can be effectively parallelized. Parallel reduction is a foundational algorithm which we are going to explore in this video. The CPU algorithm is serial. So to compute the result of 1 plus 2 plus 3, we first need to know the result of 1 plus 2. Similarly, to compute the result of 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, we first need to know what 1 plus 2 plus 3 is. So each step has a dependency on the result of the previous one. but if we group these elements differently and say that we are going to add 1 plus 2 and we are going to add 3 plus 4, we don't need to know the result of 1 plus 2 to do 3 plus 4. So in saying that, what we have done is we have basically moved from a very unbalanced binary tree to a balanced one. So previously, we started with n nodes at the base of our tree. And since we are doing one addition per level, we are only able to decrease the number of nodes by one with each level. On level zero, we have n elements. On level one, we have n minus one elements. On level two, we have n minus two elements and so on. This means it will take us n minus one levels. But after this transformation, what we are doing is we are doing multiple additions per level. So on the very first level, you have n nodes. We start with the n nodes just the same. And then at every level, we half the number of nodes. So we go from n to n by 2 to n by 4 and so on until we reach 1. So if we had k elements in our tree, the final level will have n over 2 to the power k number of nodes which should just be 1 so that means k will come out to be log n base 2 which is the number of levels in our tree so in the first case the depth of our tree grew linearly with the number of nodes whereas after the transformation it grows only with log n we are still doing the same amount of work to compute the sum we still need to do n minus 1 additions but in the second case we are just doing it in a fewer number of steps. Now, this only helps us if we can do all the additions in a single level at the same time, that is in parallel. Well, luckily, CUDA allows us to do exactly that because we can just launch one thread per pair of elements. One important thing to note here is that the transformation we did is only valid for binary associative operations, where binary means that it takes two inputs and associative means that the order of association between these elements does not matter. So it does not matter if I group 1 and 2 first or 2 and 3 first. It should end up in the same result. Other examples of binary associative operations are multiplication, maximum, minimum, and or or. So we can do this algorithm with all of these operations as well. Some non-examples include subtraction. If you do this transformation on subtraction, you will not end up the same result. For instance, 1 minus 2 minus 3 is not the same as 1 minus 2 minus 3. Now let's look at how the algorithm actually works. So for these eight elements, we will launch four threads. Now to get to the first level of our tree, every thread will read its assigned value, the value next to it, add them together or do whatever operation we want and then write the result back. At this point, we have completed one level of our tree. We'll do the same thing again, but this time we don't need as many threads to be active. We don't need to perform as many additions. So only thread 0 and thread 2 will be active this time. And we will repeat this process. Now we are at the last level of our tree and we only need to do one addition. That means we only need one thread active. So we'll keep thread zero active. And now we have reached at our result. So let's look at the code for this now. So the kernel is pretty straightforward. We start by launching blocks of 1024 threads each, where every thread is responsible for two elements in the input array. One level of our reduction tree corresponds to one iteration of this for loop. And as we go down the tree, we double the stride at every level. As we traverse down the tree, 
the number of additions that we actually have to perform gets halved. So not all the threads will be active all the time, only those whose indices are multiple of stride. Finally, we must guarantee that all operations at a given level are completed before we can move on to the next level. Now the problem is that we can only reduce up to 2048 elements at a time. This is because we can only launch up to 1024 threads and every thread is responsible for two elements. So to solve this, we can divide our input array into segments and do reduction on each of those blocks. Once the block has finished reducing its segment, one of the threads from each of those blocks can just go and atomically add its result back to a global total. So the extension we need to do for this to happen is straightforward enough. This time, instead of starting at the beginning of the input array, every block starts at the start of its assigned segment. Segment. Every block reduces two times the number of threads it has. So the next block starts right after that. And once the block is done, we elect thread zero from that block to take the result and add it to the global total, which is the output. There is basically no difference in how we launch the kernel. So now that our kernel works for an arbitrary number of elements, I thought it would be fun to compare against PyTorch and see where we end up. So I'm going to use the GPU mode leaderboard for this, and we can submit the kernel we wrote as inline CUDA that gets compiled from PyTorch. And and for the reference PyTorch version, we can just use a built-in function. We will need to make a few small changes though. Because the problem on GPU mode expects us to do reduction on 32-bit floating point numbers, which are not truly associative and thus can produce unreliable results due to floating point errors, we will have to do the reduction in 64-bit floating point. So that means we'll have to first copy our 32-bit floating point tensors to 64-bit do the reduction and then copy that 64 bit floating point output back to 32 bit. And the way GPU mode benchmarking works right now is that it will include the time for those copies. But this is not a big problem because our PyTorch version, the PyTorch version we are comparing against will also have to do this and it will be included in its timing as well. So I think it's a fair comparison. So our kernel takes 1526.845 microseconds, whereas the PyTorch one takes only 925. So we did all this work and we're 1.6 times slower than the PyTorch one liner. There is a lot of room to optimize the reduced kernel we wrote in this video, but I think I'm going to leave those optimizations for a different video.